with uh, Burke and Jerk talking watches and drinking beer. Burke put some uh, dodgy picon, yeah, P I C O N into the beer, and I gotta say it tastes uh, nice and slightly bitter. Uh, and it's gonna, and it most importantly, it has a medicinal qualities. Yes, it uh, it uh, apparently treats the symptoms of malaria, just in case we we caught that. And quite possibly. Uh, Pangolin, uh, bat soup, uh, disease. Yes. Diseases. Yes. All right. So, what do I have in my hands? Tell us. Uh, you have um, Minerva Pythagore Two. Uh, Minerva is a is a really interesting brand. I think they were they, they've got to be about a hundred years old, and for the longest time they were family owned business. Uh, it was a family Frey who was owning this. So I think uh, uh, they, they ran through two or three generations, and then. Uh, when was it? In the early 2000s, they, they kind of went into administration. They changed hand a few times, went to administration, uh, ended up being bought by uh, the Richemont Group because they were looking for the uh, manufacturing capability because uh, Minerva uh, was one of those uh, rare uh, brands who were capable of producing in-house movements. They wanted that for Mont Blanc more, more specifically. So, right. uh, so be, whatever uh, in-house movement you have on a Mont Blanc now yeah. uh, is made in that uh, particular factory. So uh, Mont Blanc is a bit uh, with their marketing blurb. They're a bit uh, cagey, you know. So they're, they're going to make a chronograph version with a Minerva and then the three hander. Yeah. Gonna try to make you forget that uh, it's an ETA inside, I suppose. Well, you don't forget uh, the ones uh, with the Minerva movement inside because uh, the yeah, price is just, it. uh, it's just <laughs> absolutely uh, uh, incredible, uh, and, and there's a story uh, about but, that. You know, actually, actually, it's quite good to offer something of higher grade uh, within the within the brand, and then have something a bit more more affordable. Uh, you know, I wish other other brands would. Uh, uh, Longines, for example, imagine yeah. if Longines, we were talking about it last week, if they were doing doing those uh, new reissues with a higher grade top movement in-house or, you know, if they were buying a company like Minerva to do it, for example, if they can't do it themselves any, uh, anymore, and then next to it offer the uh, ETA versions, I think that that could go a long way in bringing back uh, some uh, equity into the brand in the eyes of the uh, the snobs. Uh, like us right now, so but, um, but but that that is interesting. So uh, the uh, the movement that you see here, uh, originally the uh, the Minerva uh, Pythagore was a thirty four millimeter watch, and you can see that this movement is um, is small compared to the size of the case, which is thirty eight millimeters. But right. uh, you know, and uh, the Minerva uh, Pythagore one uh, was probably produced, you know, in the uh, in the eighties. Uh, mostly and then in the 90s they came up with the Pythagore 2 um, just because the the trend of larger watches was already starting at that time and um, it's uh, again it's a it's a manufacturer movement it's a completely in-house movement now the level of finishing that you have inside this is is nowhere near you know what you have in the in a Patek or in a, in a longer, but still, you know, for for the visible part, it's still nice enough, and uh, and it's quite special because again, it's a, it's an in-house movement. The story about that, uh, you know, fast forward many years with uh, Mont Blanc. Last year, um, they went through their inventory just to check what they had, and they found out that they had a stash of these movements still available. And they're like, wow, okay, so some of these old uh, Minerva movements. So what they've done is that they've taken these movements, they've refinished them to much higher grades, uh, so that there has been work uh, onto this, and they've put it in, the, in a Mont Blanc watch. But I think that they're selling these watches for, I think, 20,000 US dollars uh, and they're Simple impressive pr pr three handles that or, yeah no. the, 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 that movement right that watch when it was sold in the late 90s was going for I think 1800 US dollars so this is where this is where this is where you know 
companies, brands are, are taking the piss, right? Because when they acquired, when Richemont acquired Minerva so that they can have the manufacturing capability for Mont Blanc, they didn't even know that they had that in their inventory. Right? They found it mm. by, by accident, meaning that, you know, as part of the valuation, it wasn't in, it, that, that was just, you know, movement that they got for free. Now, again, they refinished it, we re-regulated and, and so forth, and they put it uh, in a very nice case. You know, it's probably, the case is probably finished to a much higher standard than that. But that, again, was something that 20 years ago was selling for less than 2,000 US dollars. And now they're saying that they're selling the, the watch with the equivalent movement inside for, for 20 plus thousand US dollars. This is, this is brands taking the consumer for a ride because Ouch. people don't know what they are buying. Um, this is, you know, on, on a personal note, this is actually quite close to my heart because I almost bought that watch in 1998. Um, and I was just getting into, you know, watch collecting. My, my first decent, I'm not sure if I should use that word for that brand. I bought a, a Tag Heuer in uh, 1995 and that was my first, you know, expensive of sorts a watch and then I had a couple of Orises actually I had one Oris and one day I went I was in Paris at the time and I went to a, a shop called Les Montres in the, the 6th arrondissement of Paris and I was really looking for a, for a dress watch like that simple and um, there was that and, and the guy was really pushing and saying look you really need to consider this because it's it's so good for what it is and the price for what it is you know, it was like a 7,000 French francs at the time, mm. right? Which translates into 1,200 euros or 1,300 euros tops. That's what it was going for. It's like for the price, it, you know, it's, a, it's an in-house movement. You don't find this anywhere else at that price point. And it's, it's so well done. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely brand. Um, but then I, I looked at it and <laughs> there was a Norris that looked very, very <laughs> similar to this oh, at, oh. at half the price. <laughs> at uh, at uh, three or three and a half thousand uh, francs at the time and my line of thought was my, my, my other passion uh, is uh, shoes you know um, nice shoes like, oh uh, really you know, Mary yeah like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, you know uh, Crockett and Jones and John Lobb and, and whatnot and uh, my, my line of thought was hey I can get the Oris and I can still buy a really nice pair of shoes for mm. the price difference and therefore I went for the for the Oris and fast forward a few years, this stopped to be to be made in the early 2000s. And then I knew a lot more about watches and I was just absolutely kicking myself because I'm like, why did you buy that thing? Because <laughs> they're impossible to find. They're so difficult to find. Yeah. They, they come, the, 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 the Pitago and the Pitago 2 come in three different dial variations. So there's this one, which they call their, their Jubilee uh, um, uh, uh, version of a dial they have one that looks a lot more like a pilot uh, type dial so black with big uh, big numeral big uh, uh, luminescent uh, numerals with uh, cathedral type hands and the the third one uh, you know black numeral on a silver dial with uh, black sword sword hands which is very nice as well but that was always a version that appealed to me and uh, and I and I let it go. And for years and years and years, it was nagging me because I'm like, this is one of the things that, you know, one of your regrets, right? Because yeah. it's, it's not like, you know, you regret not buying, say, a Daytona and then you go on Chrono 24 and there's a thousand of them for sale at any given mm. time, right? So then it's just a matter of price. Yeah. This is not just a matter of price. It's finding one that's difficult. And I saw one on Chrono 24 about two years ago and I'm like, wow, okay, I need to have that thing. <laughs> and I contacted the seller. And this is the, the, the part where it becomes even more personal because I, uh, the seller turned out to be uh, William Massina. If, you, if you've heard about the guy, right. he used to run uh, timezone.com uh, and, and a few other you know, uh, sites uh, and, and, and enterprises in, uh, in the watch industry. Extremely knowledge, knowledgeable guy. And I had, uh, I went, to New York, I think it was in 2002 or 2003, and we had dinner together, 
and we talked watch for for three hours and uh and just to find that it was william uh, selling this watch just made it a little bit special i hadn't talked to the guy in many many years so when i saw the email come back i'm saying are you kidding me uh you know it's it's a small world you know to uh to to find that so uh i was uh you know i made the deal within you know two minutes with him That's because I, I just I, I just needed to have that it's it's still at 38 millimeters it's still Is it very the same wearable. one you had seen yes that, that's that's the exact the, same well one. uh, uh I, I don't know Could that be the same watch uh i don't know if it's the same what i i don't i don't think it was the same watch because this watch was done in uh i think in two different uh, ways you have a this particular version has a swan neck regulator mm. there was a version which didn't have it and i think it was a, a function of which market it was sold to so i think the american ones got this one neck regulator for some reason and i could be wrong was producing all the parts or yes all? yes wow so that that that's why it's uh it's it's a it's a very special brand it's a it's very endearing um i went on quarter 24 the other day there is none you know a, a model like that the only one i've found right now is actually on timezone.com uh but the one is the guy is selling it with a with a metal bracelet so it goes for 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 a bit more than what i paid uh but they they they're very hard to come by uh that, that, and that for me is uh is also the pleasure of collecting because you know just going after those things that are not that are just a little bit of the beaten track that you're not going to find anyone having on their wrist nobody recognizes that i don't care i i really could could care less i, I know what it is it it just makes me happy uh to have uh that watch um it's uh yeah and and it it speaks to a a, a bygone era right where you still had you know family run business uh doing this kind of thing i guess you have that now again with all of the you know some of the micro brands uh, and what they're doing um I, i think that there's probably too many of them right now but uh but i like the fact that this was a, a small family run business and you know that ran ran its course and then after that well it uh, you know it got absorbed uh, in a in a larger group um but cool watch uh great on the wrist uh, as usual gami phone strap uh because i just like them and and they and they last yeah it's it's one of my favorite models and uh, it's not necessarily something that i wear all the time but every now and then just uh, just getting it out is uh it brings a smile to my face and i think that's what this uh, this hobby is about